Hello, my name is Will, and today we're going to look at the next part of the Data Engineering Zoom Camp for Workflow Orchestration. Specifically, we're going to look at how we can add schedules to our BigQuery workflow, and then we can also perform backfills for the data from 2019 and 2020. So let's jump into that. Now, previously, we had a workflow here that was able to get dates from using inputs. So we could select with a drop down 2019 and 2020, as well as the month but we're gonna now replace that and use a trigger to automatically fulfill this for us for both the green and yellow data sets. And then we can perform backfills to go back in time and fill in the blanks from those previous months. So let's now do that for the yellow data set because if we try to do that on our local machine, we would very quickly run out of storage. But we'd also find it would take forever. So with that in mind, let's now add this trigger in so we can do that. So here is a slightly modified workflow. Let's have a look at that topology view. Now, right at the top here, we have our two schedules. These are running independently, but these are going to pass the input green or yellow automatically. Now, if we go to triggers, we can see that they are going to be scheduled to run at different times. So we'll have green run first at 9 a.m. and then we'll have yellow run at 10 a.m. And this will run on the first of each month because that's when the data will typically be available. There's no point running it daily because the data is only produced on a monthly basis. Now, going back to that topology, view, we're going to do the same things as previously, set the labels at execution so we can see which files are being processed. We're going to extract the data from GitHub, and then we're going to upload it to GCS, our data lake for BigQuery to automatically use. Then everything else remains the same. We've got the same if block for yellow and if block for green, followed by a purge files. The key difference here is, and if I go to the editor, we can view this ourselves, is we've replaced a few of these expressions in the variables to use a trigger rather than using inputs dot date, month or year or whatever. So here, this is going to get it all automatically. This does mean that if we try and run this manually, it won't work because we're not going to pass those dates to it. And we can set up more complicated expressions to do that. But today we're going to walk through how you can do it with backfills as that is going to be the best way of doing it for this scenario. So what we're going to do now is head over to triggers and you can see for both green and yellow, we get the option here to execute backfills. Now here I can select yellow as the taxi type and we can now go back to 2019 and we can set that all to be, uh, we can set that to run for the whole of 2019. And I'm gonna run that for the whole year. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna go into BigQuery and I'm gonna delete the tables we already had to allow us to start from a fresh canvas. So now we've got our data set, it's currently empty. So now if we go back to Kestra, I've set my backfill to be January 1st to the end of December. And again, something to remember is we need to make sure that the December one is after 9 a.m. If we set it to the 1st of December at midnight, it won't run December because it hasn't got past the scheduled time that it usually runs at. So let's make sure that I'm going to set it to the end of December, doesn't really matter, just something after the 1st of December at 9am. Now let's select that to yellow. Now there's one last thing we should add as well, which is a label to say that we're running it as a backfill. So we can see that easily later on in the executions to understand what was actually being achieved. So we can see we've got backfill set to true. We've set the le selected the yellow data set and we can see that everything here is empty and ready for us to work. So if I press execute backfill, we can see that it's going to get started. We can see that a backfill is in progress. And if I now go to executions, we can see it's already started on 2019 January and we can see the backfill label is there and taxi is set to yellow. So now let's come back in a little bit and let this process. So all of our executions have finished, as we can see here with the labels that we've added to make it clearer at a glimpse what's going on, it has processed data for all 12 months. Now, if I head over to our bucket and refresh the page here, we'll be able to see we've got 12 CSV files uploaded here as well. And as you can see, they're fairly large in size at about six to 700 megabytes. Now going over to BigQuery, we can see we've got tables now for every single month and we've got 18.9 gigabytes of data in our main table. And we can have a little preview of this. As you can see, there is a lot of rows here. I can see that there is uh, tons and tons of data as well. So we could do some queries on this to see all of that different data, but you can see it's got the file name and the unique row ID to help us prevent having duplicates. So hopefully you found that useful and you can now take this further and try and run this on the 2020 data or the 2021 data. Hopefully now you can build your own pipelines, both using Postgres 
and BigQuery where you can tap into the power of both to do what you need. We're gonna have a few extra videos on how you can run this with DBT as well as how you can deploy this to the cloud. So stay tuned for those, but if you have any questions, let us know in Slack.